ceremonies, Nathan Kassar. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Justice Plan Weddings podcast and TV show, your go-to source for wedding wisdom and inspiration. I'm your host and wedding MC, as always, Nathan Kassar, and today we have a truly sensational industry great guest joining us. Get ready to be wowed as we welcome the multi-talented Anthony Hughes, better known as Divine Productions, to the show. With a stellar resume boasting over 1,000 weddings, I said that correctly, that was not the right, incorrect number of zeros it is one zero 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 weddings and a string of prestigious awards anthony is not your average dj mc or acoustic singer he is a bona fide living legend wedding entertainment powerhouse from enchanting melodies to heart pounding beats anthony has great stages around the globe from the us to ibiza sharing the limelight with music legends like matt corby and xavier rudd but it's not just about the music Anthony's charismatic MC skills honed on the stages of Chaos Comedy Restaurant add an extra layer of magic to any event. But wait, there is more. Behind the accolades and performances lies a remarkable tale of resilience and passion. Anthony's journey to the top hasn't been without his challenges, including a near-death surfing accident just days before his own wedding. Yet through it all, his dedication to creating unforgettable moments for couples shines brighter than ever. In today's conversation, Anthony will share invaluable insights into the world of wedding entertainment. We'll delve into the importance of seeing out experienced vendors for your big day, the evolving landscape of singer-DJ combos, and the secrets to finding vendors who will elevate your big day from awesome to absolutely incredible. So grab a seat, turn up that volume, and get ready to be inspired. Anthony, welcome to the show. Brother, good to have you. That intro was fantastic. Um, I feel that my head might be expanding. Or, uh, I'm taking up too much of the screen just straight it was off. I don't all your material, been... my friend. It was yeah. nothing else except what you wrote. So uh... <laughs> I'm so well, glad that you put all of it in. Uh, I spent a long time <laughs> um, exaggerating my own life. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it's, 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 it is actually all true. But no, um... it's great to have you. I can't believe that when, you, when I was hearing your story, uh, reading, I should say, about how you almost missed your own wedding and you couldn't sing the song that you prepared because of your accident. Tell us a little bit more about that. So um, approximately three days before my own wedding, just as we were doing, putting the final touches on the bus schedule, um, I went, you know, just want to give myself a clear my head and get into a nice positive uh, frame of mind, which surfing always helps before I put the final touches on my own wedding speech. Um, went for a surf. The surfboard came back and hit me right in the wrist oh. and opened it completely up. Um, I have a scar from here to there. I lost an artery. Uh, the ambulance uh, carried me to the hospital and they were worried that they weren't going to be able to get me into surgery in time oh, to get married. So I'd written a surprise song to sing at my own wedding to, you know, be very romantic the wedding singer singing a beautiful original song that he wrote for that day for his wife people were expecting um, it to be low key as well <laughs> but yeah <laughs> but this is the, the chord hand and it didn't really work because oh, yeah. you know two days before i got the emergency surgery and um and got it all sewn up so i could be there but the, it was very touch and go um i've never even seen a fin chop anything like that but it was um quite gory wow that is just you know it just really goes to show for anyone listening that you know they uh, and we under we, you and i both understand that all of our couples want everything to go perfect on the day and they want their lead up to be you know immaculate and all that but it really just goes to show that no matter what goes on in your life you can never really ever do anything but adapt to the unexpected like you did three days before your big day well, it's, it's funny you say that, like, you know, looking at the, the, the title of the podcast is Just As Planned. I also think that, and something which I always say to couples, because we had a few obstacles to overcome for our own one, like COVID, it put it off for a year. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, and then uh, our, something happened where we had to change venues uh, a month out, which was a, a bit, oh, and we thought that wow. was like, wow, this is traumatic. When that happened, it was like, you know what? What it gave me, I think, is when people are stressed and couples are stressed, 
Mm. And things are going on because the dress isn't fitting or the flower budget blew out and they can't get the azaleas that they wanted. <laughs> um, uh, I'm kind of like I tell my story and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. It's <laughs> weird. That's amazing. <laughs> you know? Neither. They don't go anywhere near the beach before their day. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have uh, told that story to couples and just sort of gone, um, you know what, my, one piece of advice, because I know that Tom is a surfer, mm. maybe a rest for the couple of weeks before. <laughs> you know, it's funny that, you, you know, when everything is put into perspective, I mean, this is more or less like a life comment as opposed to specific for weddings, but you can certainly apply it to both. It's, you're right, like when everything is considered in a relative way, like, you know, okay, is you know, you not being able to get that particular flower or something may seem crazy. I'm here for you, but could you try not potentially being alive for it? Yeah. Yeah, I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's wow. also, yeah, that perspective giver also, and especially because weddings are quite a, a high intensity, high emotional intensity that we can get caught up. And the, I find sometimes when you're speaking to couples, sometimes the conversations are just to like go, in the end, today you found this person that you have built or are building a life with and you want to do that for ages, forever, for as long as you're alive, and then you want to have a big celebration to celebrate that you have found this amazing person you want to build this amazing life with them and that's the rest of its details the rest of it sort of but mm. that's the core of it and then you can expand all the things to celebrate as perfectly as you want around that but that's the crutch of the that's what it should be about yeah. yeah, and I think one one thing that's really important that I'm a huge advocate for is, you know, you, you you as a couple take care of yourselves, be solid emotionally and physically and everything else in between before the day. It's to be a bit radio silence as best as possible one week out so that everything's done. I don't disappear. Mm -hmm somebody that's giving extra communication beforehand it says we should all have it all organized one week before and then just to enjoy and have a few me days for each other and be a non-married couple before you're a married couple you know a few days after but i think you, you so you mentioned the details and sort of the, the everything else that gets surrounded in between now, i'm a big advocate for trusting your vendors and really leveraging on those people who have a lot of experience speaking yeah. directly to the idea of the concept that experience does matter why why would you because you, you're a very seasoned performer you've been doing this for a very long time and you've earned your you know you've earned your right to to sort of you know be known as a veteran in the industry and knows exactly what's going on why would you argue and put forward the idea that when couples are considering vendors there's many different ones out there and everyone starts somewhere but why would you say perhaps couples should maybe consider more experience on their plate as opposed to those who are cutting their teeth a bit early in their career? Look, uh, experience matters. If you are going to get open heart surgery, I generally don't want to go with the intern. If I can afford that, um, it's, it's not saying that weddings are life and death, but you do get one shot at it. And I know, for example, when things would go awry or go off or, I'll just use an example when I started, like I was doing venues, which was part of the package. So I came part of the package with it. I know that I had decent, good, solid equipment, but I didn't have a backup. I didn't know. I didn't think about having a backup. I was lucky to have all the equipment to do the singing, DJing, emceeing. And it was, you know, as I progressed, I remember uh, I had a an equipment failure at a pub gig and it was just the, the DJ mixer. Pioneer, beautiful $1,800 mixer just didn't start up. Mm. I was lucky that I had a friend who lived around the corner who was a DJ and I called him and went, can you please pull, you know, give me one? <laughs> and, and, and he was like, yeah, I'm around the corner. I was like, I'll be there in five minutes. I started like two minutes after I was supposed to start. Problem mm. averted, you know, crisis uh, averted. But I remember thinking if that was next week's wedding dine at Kayama, I would mm. not have had that option. So then I went through all of the things, equipment that I had and went, and I that came about from experience. Uh, knowing to be, it's more like when you're emceeing, you would know obviously this, but it's very much a liaison job. Things yeah. move around. The timesheet goes out the window when you come back from photos sometimes because there was an awesome sunset mm. 15 minutes later and the entrees are supposed to come out 
and there was supposed to be a speech in between, but that, that option's gone. Yeah. If you don't have that experience, you don't know how to move those things around to keep it back and to get it back on track or mm. where you can eat the time around without, you know, annoying the chef because that's 120 meals, which will be completely not as good as possible when they're foodies and you know that. So moving those things around, asking the photographer where is best lighting for the speeches. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, videographer, uh, you know, especially for, for me, that a lot of the times they're getting the audio out of my system, putting mm -hmm. it on your microphones. If inexperienced, you might be like, why are they talk? Why are they asking this? Why are they, the I don't have a thing. I don't know that answer. Yeah. Yeah. All those things. It's, it really is keying in with all of your different vendors and being able to know how to, you know, even to walk into a venue that you haven't played at before to know where to get the best sound, how to EQ your speakers. And you might be good at part of it, but to do all three well at a high level, at a high intensity, like a wedding mm -hmm. for, you know, eight hour sorts of things, you've got to know your stuff. you got to know your structure. No, no. you got to know how to, 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 to work with your other vendors and your own I couldn't agree with you and more. your own stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. And look, uh, you know, I, I'm still, I'm st absolutely aware, consciously aware that I'm sure I'm speaking for yourself as well, that, you know, we all know where we started from, of course, we're very conscious yeah. of where our careers began and the opportunities that we're given. And we're obviously incredibly grateful for it because both yours and I's career, for instance, you know, we've, we've, you know, we've, we've done, we're doing many things now, that obviously we wouldn't be capable of doing right at the beginning of our careers, but yeah. it is all, I think just to sort of sort of tie that up. I think it's a matter of, knowing that if you've got certain, if you're setting up a type of wedding that requires that kind of logistics, then having somebody who perhaps isn't as experienced in one realm, which actually might title and together, say for instance, the the DJ or the MC or something like that, where you, or a celebrant perhaps, where you're doing a very sort of, you know, you've got lots of different little formalities or other cultural parts to it where they've never mm. done it before and there's a tight run sheet, perhaps then going, okay, if experience, yes, does eke a little bit of extra budget, we know at least that that part that is a central link in the chain has been taken care of. And we can maybe give, you know, a newer florist or a newer content creator or something, an opportunity for something that isn't as a significant link in the chain in order to save us the money, but just not for that particular really important part in the chain that we needed to keep this night together. I think what you're saying right there is perfect to something which I always tell couples as well. It's like, what is important to you because some people it's that put your budget on the dress because you want to have the best dress because that's what you really like fashion and you're going to get this special designer and blah, blah. some people it's like it is the music some people it's like i want a host to be able to be culturally sensitive to my things who's mm -hmm. going to be be able to play the games like i know that the one one of the ones we've done together you uh did that fantastic and hosted that perfect and it's having those different um put your budget with what is important to you. Yeah. Perfect. If it's food, food. If it's if it's entertainment, entertainment, it's a host, you know, whatever it is. And you know, and then maybe you do get the less experience or for the part which, you know, if if budget is a concern, if you if your budget's blowing out. Yeah. And I think really the question then becomes, because obviously people are thinking, okay, so we're on board for this idea. Uh, we're now prioritizing who's important. So what is important to us in terms of each category of fender that we may get incorporated into our wedding or not? So, okay, we've got these pillars of importance and the people we want now, the types of categories. How do we then go, in your opinion, how do we then go about vetting these potentials to the best way possible to be able to get the right choices, to set the mood appropriately and to have everything in place that they want? Look, I'm a big believer on getting on the phone and talking to people. I know that's not everybody. Like, obviously, you've got budgetary constraints and you've got to be like, you know, you don't necessarily want to fly someone like they're the best, but they're based in Queensland. I'm getting married in Victoria. Like, you know, you obviously try and narrow it down. People will travel to a certain extent. And you might have to, like, I'm, I'm definitely doing a lot up at the Hunter Valley, which a lot of times I need accommodation and there's a travel cost. Mm. There, but it's not, I'm quite comfortable with that amount of travel. I do believe so. Find where your budgetary cutoff is, but then also get on the phone. You want to be able to feel comfortable to, to ask about their experience, ask about their equipment if you're, you know, um, interested in that, if you know what that means, because it might 
not mean anything um, <laughs> to you. Like I'm asking, which like, what equipment do you use? I don't know what that is. Why don't do that? But yeah. um, know that they, like, so for example, with what I do, do all performers have backup equipment? I would dare say no. Hmm. Um, if you've been doing it for a long time and you have had, you know, the trauma of having a failed piece of equipment is enough for you to go out and buy backup equipment and have it at the ready. Um, yeah. But also, you know, talking to the people, finding the people which you connect with, there you'll always find that like, oh, I get a good vibe. I get a good sense of this person over the phone and know that like there are people out there who it's going to be the best day of your life. Hmm. So you've got all your friends and family and you want to have people who are around you, like an MC or a singer or a DJ or a celebrant or this, this stuff, who are also going to help escalate that mood. And I know when I get on to uh, at, a, at a wedding uh, venue and you've got, uh, like, I'll just use an example, uh, Lucas from Grow Wild. He's very mm. enthusiastic. He's always upbeat. He's excited. And then, you know, you have, you know, you as a, as an MC and then we've got like, you know, a, a, another photographer, which I've worked with and they're upbeat and they're fun. And it just that synergy, you know, already, this is going to be awesome. And then mm -hmm. that also bounces, you bounce off the bride and groom who are always glowing because it's their wedding day. And it, and the whole thing becomes this sort of synergy it's hard to just find that off the a phone call, but I generally think you can. Uh, I you believe can get so a sense too. Of someone. Yeah, and I believe you get a you sense of someone. Yeah, who will help escalate that energy, which you're already going to be in a great mood. You don't want the wet blanket in there. Try no, and those somehow. you really, you really, <laughs> really don't. I think it's just a matter of having that establishing something that's a bit more beyond the email. I know, look, all respect to anybody listening that, of course, you know, lives a busy lifestyle and getting on the phone is tough or perhaps you feel anxious about having a phone call. And that's okay too. Like I, there's total respect and, you know, definitely let us as vendors know what the most appropriate level of type of communication that will make yes. you feel better as well. God knows yeah. the amount of times that I've, you know, tried to call just because it is, it was a phone number was offered and there was no indication that that would be a bad method. And all of a sudden it was like, no, 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 please just email. I'm like, okay, I, I, thank you for telling me now. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's good that we can get that established early because then we can then connect with you best. But Definitely, I totally agree with you. Finding people that are going to be great touch points throughout the night is really critical yeah. because I'm I'm a big advocate for like, you know, particularly the wedding that you and I did that you referenced where it was you and I and a great photographer we also had as well. And we had Jane and Lucas who own Grow Wild. Big shout out to them. One of the best venues yeah. in New South Wales. I'm uh, not yeah. being paid to say that at all. Um, yeah. And they like, you know, every little moment that the bride and groom, groom and groom, bride and bride get to experience with them because all the guests that get to see them, it is always you bounce off like a pinball machine from one happy person to the next happy person that you get a photo taken with someone that's smiling and pumping the audience up. And then I get to take everybody upstairs to go do canapes and you're singing there and you're taking requests and having a chat and having like fun little interludes in between song. And everyone, there's just this ball of energy. It's nothing worse yeah. than when I've done like an intro and I'm sure you know this too as an MC where I've done this amazing fun intro and then the next thing is the photographer's going around, whoever this may be, no one in particular, going around doing photo, uh, table photos. And it's like, okay, next. Yeah. Yep. Great. Done. Move. And it's it, that just sucks everything that we've brought in for that point. And you don't want that. So I, I total advocate for what you've just mentioned. It's about bringing the vibes, bringing the energy, having those phone calls, having those connections, having that Zoom call. If it has to be a coffee date, let's do it. I like coffee. Yeah. Uh, but either I way, just, today. Oh, great. Did you know how since, to go? Since I've moved down the coast, I haven't done as many um, uh, uh, meetups. I did a lot more when I was living in Cronulla. And, um, and it was the first one. I was like, oh, cool. They're like, we literally live around the corner. I was like, we're meeting. You know, <laughs> a lot, <laughs> That's a lot good, of times it, right? it is. But even a Zoom call, like this is, you know, yeah. it's a, a Zoom call for one yeah. of, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I know what it's like to interact with you in person. I prefer that, always yeah. prefer that as a, as a people person. And but it's it's this is still good. It's better than no, it's, it's even better than a phone call. 
I know yeah, exactly. Yeah, getting a face to a name and 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 is 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 even better. So you know, at a minimum, phone call, great. Yeah, even if look, even if your preferred method is emails, I say let's write an exciting one. I get excited when I see like inquiries come through, and it's a yeah. nice, fun message. You know what I mean? Like it shows that you've shown taken time, you're interested. I, I believe that. Look, I'll take every single inquiry. I'm sure I speak for you as well. But it is. It sort of it tugs at the heart a little bit in the wrong way when it's just like prices, and then it's like oh. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm a I'm a human connector, so I will give you the price. But you know, I, I'm already sensing there's perhaps a bit of an energy mismatch here. Whereas when it's yeah. like, oh, I've seen your videos, and I love your content, and I love your smile, and I'm just really feeling excited about having the opportunity to meet you. I'm like, mm. oh yes, this is great. Not because mm. yes, we're rubbing our hands together for money. It's because we go, wow, we're, we're, we're being embraced potentially by somebody that, as long as the price is right and the, the mood's right when we're having the chat and everything else in between, we're going to be able to create something beautiful on the day. So uh, yeah, it's always better when that happens, right? And it's and look, it's what you said before. It's 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 because it's not. I honestly, you know, obviously there's there. It is a job, and you do need to get paid for your time. But I generally get excited to do people's weddings. Mm. I've been doing a long time. I've done over a thousand weddings. Um, and I, it's it, how do you get sick of love? It's the most I agree infectiously in a positive way uh, vibe of a day, and it just sort mm. of. It's, it radiates into your life. It seeps into who you are. You uh, Each wedding that someone goes, hey, we saw you at blah, 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 and Tom and Sally's wedding, and, you know, you were great. You know, I, I know what you mean with that as opposed to, like, prices. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. You, you know, to have that, that like, or, or, yeah, like, well, I saw your your uh, socials and I like your vibe or whatever it is, mm. a, a thought-out email, it's any way to uh because it is a, about building a connection you it, it's a very intimate thing you're you're uh, yeah. i still get every inquiry that i'm potentially going to be in someone's you know only in a circle <laughs> yeah and you're going to be in the middle a lot of the times you know with a microphone introducing all of their friends and family and themselves on the best day of life got to take that seriously you know <laughs> and it's relatively intimate right it, it is that that effect that it has is. when people come to us and say how long have you known them because they genuinely believe that we've created those connections well beyond the day itself and it's like no well, no like i love being here and i love getting to know everybody but no this is a new experience getting to know all these people here but it's because we care because there was a excitement nothing better than when i know that a bridal party comes to me and says oh we've heard all sorts of things about you before the day and i go oh i hope it's good and they laugh yeah and have a good time and like but it's nice because yeah. you're excited about us and that's that's that should be for every single vendor you get i want to touch yeah. on just one more thing before we have to wrap up but when you and i yeah. talk forever as we always do to him put two, two mcs <laughs> together oh goodness yeah. but you were the pioneer of you're at the forefront of your game many years because you're i mean if the audience doesn't know if they're not if only listening you are are about 60 years of age even and you've been doing the industry for about a hundred of that so you know you've been around for a long time you look great for 60 though um mm, but like it's it's, <laughs> it's all the it's all the baby's blood that i drink um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> being a vampire helps this is really a real old. sunlight coming through well, you've, that's otherwise you've got the hair playing. for it yeah yeah <laughs> It's so good. Um, tell me, you were a pioneer of this concept of what I call the slashies. And in your case, it was the singer slash DJ slash MC. And there wasn't in your era, in your time when you first started, really no one was doing this. They weren't combining. Everyone was very silo. They would stick into a lane. And you you were one of the very first few people coming out there and, and, and combining these services. So there, it's become obviously a lot more popular now. It's, it's very much on trend. It's perceived as being a money saver. I would argue that it's not always the case, particularly if you're finding no, good people like yourself. But, but certainly... What what are the options out there for people, and what do, what kind of difference does it offer for people when they've just discovered that you can get a singer slash DJ slash MC slash whoever? What, what does that provide? What, what, how does that change? What's going on in that landscape at the moment? And uh, what is it a trend that's going to be continuing? If you think, I definitely think it will be something continuing. Uh, I can sort of. I know when I started, there was, when I Googled to see if there was anyone, there was only one other person who was a lot older than I was. I was sort of mid twenties and had been singing at that stage, mid twenties, uh, sort of professionally for sort of six, seven years. I'd been DJing for maybe two, but they were always on the weekend. That was my weekend job while I did other things, you know, mm. um, 
and I traveled the world and blah, blah, blah. But I, and I had a lot of friends who were DJs, but they were more in the clubs and I was doing the 21sts and the, and the, the pub and, and had residencies with that. Um, but there were very separate lanes at that time. There was people, and if to be a DJ, you had to have a CD collection of a lot of songs so that as much as you could burn CDs, like, and there was still um, the, um, you could download MP3s, you could organise it. It was still a lot of work, mm-hmm. a lot. So you had to be a bit of a music geek. Yeah. And I used to work at a CD store. That's how old I am. Uh, when people had bought them. Um, and so I loved all the genres. So when my friend was like, I need someone to cover my DJ slot, you're my guy. And I was like, I don't know how to do it. And he goes, but you know music and I can teach you the mm. the basics. And they were my friends. And I, anyway, so, um, and I, I still remember I used to get more nervous about DJing than I would about playing guitar and singing in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> I get more nervous about pressing play, and I, I likened it to um, stand-up comedy web because people protest very quickly with their feet. I don't mm. like this song, and they will come up and tell you this is not my song. I don't like this song, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you get that instant uh, feedback. Mm. Uh, so I know, and I developed into it. I had a residency for 10 years playing to a thousand people. I've played at like Electric Gardens Festival. I've, I've, you know, went over to Ibiza. I've, I've played Space Ibiza when they've come to it. And I've done like R&B nights in Bali. I've played to like mm. a, a big sort of club there. But, but I was, I, so that was one. And I used to have a Thursday residency singing. I would have a Friday residency DJing. And then on Saturdays was my wedding functions day where i would do a mixture the emceeing came about a lot of the times with there was the, the my sister's wedding was the first time that i emceed a wedding and mm. i read a book called how to be a wedding MC. Oh, and wow. years later i met a multiple abia winner who wrote the book literally the book that i read about how to do it um uh, i think as technology has come forward <laughs> And people DJ with laptops and a little MIDI controller. And even those MIDI controllers, when they first came out, were buggy. My yeah. very, very kicking and screaming moved over to them because I'd seen so many buggy songs in the middle of sets. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. I'm playing to a thousand people. I'm going to stick with mm. CDs until technology is good enough to not have it stuff up. And then finally, I. You know, I, I bought two because I have to have a backup one uh, as a controller. And it's always the, you know, the, the all the bells and whistles ones. I see a lot of people using those $400 little controllers, which mm. to me is a toy. It's fine to have a as, a as a potential backup or something. But if you've been DJing and you're used to having a setup which is $7,000 to go to a $400 toy... <laughs> to me seems like you're not really doing that at a wedding are you are you yeah so someone's best day of life and well it goes back to what you said at the beginning right to have that 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 experience means that you also have an emphasis on proper equipment and even though you know our our couples may not necessarily notice the difference between a, a expensive pioneer deck versus a tractor backup controller the difference is is that you as an event professional who now also has been given through the power of modern technology can you know literally perform from go straight from your guitar to sing an all-in-one mixer then go to your dj deck plus pray for the for the entrances and at the same time when you've got that playlist going you can literally walk away from that deck and if you have it all set up and you can stand in front of the middle of the audience control your music via ipad and still perform like you would as an mc does provide you the level of flexibility but it can only come from the experience that you are that you built over the years so again just sort of tying it all back to the beginning it really just goes to show that sometimes having that conversation with people like yourself when it comes to experience is really critical anthony look i i would as i said before i would love to chat with you forever and i i'm i'm I'm, I'm limited to the to the format that we are in here today but we'll we'll i'm sure you and i will catch up again very shortly but i would love for our audience to catch up with you uh in person to book you so how can they find you on the interwebs and how can they uh yeah have your sultry acoustic singing dj (laughs) sensation at their wedding 
Uh, the easiest way would go straight to the website, www.divineproductions.com.au. D-I-V, not D-E-V. Um, you can just put in Anthony Hughes Wedding Singer. I will also pop up. Or you can go to my Instagram page, which is Anthony Hughes Music. Uh, you know, Instagram. On the gram. The, yeah. Yes. Love yeah. it. Well, Anthony, congratulations on what has already been a star-studded uh, career to, to, your, to your life so far. I don't know how you fit it all in, um, but uh, it's incredible that, you know, to meet uh, passionate professionals like yourself, I've worked with you personally, and I know that you're an upstanding gentleman who knows exactly what they're doing. And I, It's just, it's so nice to, uh, to have experience at the helm uh, with people like yourself out there being really passionate about what you deliver to a wedding. So well done for that. Thank you for all that you do out there and hope to see you out there again at a wedding very shortly. And same to you. I remember hearing amazing things about you. And then when we got to work, finally work together, I was like, and that's, and super that's what they're actually. saying. And that's <laughs> why he's winning the awards. And that's why it's like, it's honestly, it was like a, it was a masterclass. So I was like, damn, the boy's oh. got some skills. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> You're too kind. You're too kind. I'll send you, uh, I'll, I'll send you the money very shortly. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Anthony. Only uh, fifties care. and hundreds. None of these twenties. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm expensive these days. You know, you know what it's like when you're out there at the bow. Um, yeah. Brother, I wish you all the very best and uh, I look too. forward to catching you very soon. Absolute pleasure to do this. Thanks for inviting me. And it was a pleasure to uh, sit down and have a chat. It's really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Just As Planned Wedding Podcast. Please like and subscribe to let me know that you want more videos just like this one. And of course, please follow us on our socials at Just As Planned Wedding on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more expert insights to help your wedding go just as planned.